Hello and welcome to the channel. Uh, today I'm going to demo uh, how to use loop recur uh, in Clojure. So uh, it's not something that you're going to use uh, every day when you write Clojure, but sometimes uh, when you exhaust the options uh, like map, do seek for, uh, map index and all that stuff, uh, you'll find that you need something more powerful and basically loop recur uh, allows you to um, to control what you pass into your next iteration, uh, you can do whatever you want. So usually it's a most powerful option that you have if you want to write your iterations. Uh, before we jump into uh, loop recur itself, uh, let's quickly talk about tail uh, call optimization and what's, um, what's that and why you should care about that. Uh, just a simple example. Uh, by the way, I'm using a uh, clerk notebook for the first time, um, just for demoing purposes, uh, but it's pretty nice. I can you uh, write my code and comments uh, in Markdown in a single file, and then this uh, HTML page is rendered, and we have these old executions here and all that stuff. So we'll see how that goes. It's still early days. I'm just starting uh, using that, so don't have any feedback so far, but yeah, we'll see how it goes. All right, so tail call optimization. By default, if you um, call your function in a recursive way, uh, you'll get in trouble in Clojure because it um, inherits problems from Java and there is no tail call optimization for, uh, for, these, call, uh, for these calls automatically. Uh, so what's that? We have a function to sum collection in a fancy way, uh, not just apply plus, but just for demo purposes again. Um, if we have uh, empty seek, we're going to this branch and we're returning the result. If not, we're calling the same function, but now in result we uh, summing uh, like the result existing result with the first element from from the collection. And here we have our rest of collections. So we eventually will get an empty sequence and we'll terminate our loop. So this works. If I execute this, this should return six, and we also can see that in our fancy uh, notebook. Then again, with larger input sequence, this works. But after we reach some limit, and I believe it's uh, 10,000, uh, we are now getting an stack overflow error uh, from our uh, execution. <coughs> and that's a problem, um, and you need to keep that in mind if you um, want to write functions calls like this. Uh, luckily, there is an explicit way to uh, turn on tail call optimization, and this is by calling a recur function uh, manually. So here we just changed one uh, function call. It was some call with uh, no TCO, but now we just call recur, and this recur will target the our function. Uh, so it basically will call our function again with these values as, as the input, but now uh, TCO will work. And you can prove that by calling the same uh, block, and now instead of getting our exception, we're now actually getting our real value of the sum of our collection. So let's keep in mind that uh, and don't make that uh, mistake in your production code. But anyway, I haven't seen much business code written in recursive functions like that. So you should be good. All right, moving next to simple loop recur example. So now we have our loop recur construction here. Um, the idea that you, it looks like let here at the top, and you can define uh, whatever params you want in your loop cycles. So here I just decided to have x and y, and you say, we'll see later they are completely useless, but they just to show that you can mutate them and change them and apply any logic that you want. And then we have a collection, and then we have the result. And again, we are reinventing the wheel by implementing sum of collection. Um, if you write something like uh, loop recur, you want your 
uh, exit uh, statement and the exit condition will be empty sequence, empty collection. When it's empty, we just want to return our result. If it's not empty, we want to calculate um, params for the next iteration and call uh, the recur function and pass that params. So for the next iteration, we want to increment x, we want to uh, add 2 to our y. Uh, it's not used anyway, so just to show that you can update your elements here as you want. And then for the next uh, iteration collection, we want the rest of our collection. And next iteration result will be, again, uh, sum of existing result and first element from collection. <clears throat> so yeah, uh, this is 6 at the end. Uh, again, we're using this recur here, and it will target our loop. So when you see recur, it means that end of uh, existing iteration, and we're ready to jump into our next uh, iteration cycle. And this will be our the values that will be passed in, inside our loop for the next iteration. Cool. So... I also added this uh, hacky way to track our uh, iterations uh, prompts. So we, I just created an atom and then I do swap all the time when I am into a new loop iteration. Uh, and this is the values I put into, into the array. I believe I need to re-evaluate my namespace. And let me just clean this up execute this thing and execute our uh, atom. Let's reload. And yeah, as you can see, we have our iteration prompts here. So we got one, two, three as a collection, uh, zeros as the rest. Then we reduced our collection. We now have the rest of the original one and result is already one. And then we have three and empty, and we're returning this six as a result. And you see, um, x is uh, just increments by one, uh, zero, one, two, three, and y is zero, two, six, four. So this matching our logic that defined here. So that's the basic loop recur. Um, now let's jump into slightly more interesting um, example. And I decided to implement this balancing brackets uh, from foreclosure. By the way, if you don't know this website, it's quite handy if you're just starting closure. Um, so it's a collection of uh, tasks. Uh, you can look at this as a lead code or whatever. They're not crazy algorithms, algorithms in most of them. So you can just boost your closure knowledge of core functions, how to implement some, you will re-implement some core functions as well, and also how to use uh, functions from the closure core. Uh, highly recommend if you haven't touched this before. Uh, but yeah, we're going to look into problem uh, 177, uh, and it is check if our input string is a properly balanced uh, sequence of uh, brackets. There are different types of brackets, uh, square, round, and curly, and they could be uh, nested, and we also can get other uh, letters. So let's see a couple examples, so we know uh, the statement, uh, the problem statement, we understand the problem statement better. So let's start with uh, properly balanced things. So first of all, uh, string without brace brackets, uh, properly balanced, then some properly balanced Java code. We have a matching count of uh, open and uh, closing brackets, and they are properly nested. Then we have this example, again, properly nested, like this. Uh, more complex one, hard to tell, but it's properly nested. Then we have our unbalanced inputs. So not matching uh, not matching brackets. Then we have one extra here. This is tricky, but it's basically meaning that it's not properly nested. So we got this open curly brace, but after that we are closing the square bracket. 
uh, this go goes after. So it's already unbalanced here because to properly balance, we need to move this one inside here. Again, um, long example, but it's uh, yeah, it's uh, not balanced, and then just a single one not balanced again. Let's move into our uh, logic, and if you think yourself how to solve this problem, eventually you will uh, figure out that you need some kind of stack uh, that you pass between your iterations, and in the stack you will uh, you will keep your you will store your uh, pending open brackets. Uh, so when you getting a close closing bracket, you will get the head of your stack and compare that this pair of brackets is actually matching. If that's true, you will remove your uh, head of your stack from it and uh, move on. And the exit condition will be when you reach the end of your uh, input, uh, input string uh, and you have an empty stack that means that all uh, brackets that you, um, you've you seen before uh, had a matching uh, closing pair. If you don't have an empty stack at the end, you have something in the stack, that means that something is unbalanced. Cool. And yeah, as you need to pass some complex uh, data between your iterations, loop, uh, loop recur is a nice candidate to do that and as you can see this is the main uh, function to implement that and we also have a bunch of helper functions so first of all we defined our pairs as the map between uh, characters and again uh, start really simple our input string will be just a string if you call sequence on top of that you'll get a sequence of chars and this uh, type, starting with a um, slash, is a javalang character. So, bunch of helper functions here, like check if the element that we got is an actually open bracket, and then uh, we can test that. That's this is false and this is true. And same function for the closing bracket. We're just getting the values of our map and convert it in set and check that it contains this element. So this is false, this is false, and this is true. And the final one is matches, and we get left and right, and we compare that it is an entry set, entry key value pair from our map. And this is false, and this is true. Cool. And we're using list as our stack. We can use cons to add uh, to the front of the list. So first of all, we added two and then one, so we get one, two. And to get the head of the list, we just use the first. We get first element from the list. Cool. So inside our uh, loop, so it starts here. We getting our input, we convert it into a sequence, and then we create our stack, which is an empty. Um, empty list. The exit condition from our iterations will be if the input is empty, we just want to check if the stack is empty. So if this is true, as we already discussed, this will mean that the input is properly balanced. If this is not empty, meaning this is false, it will be, uh, it will mean that uh, it's not properly balanced. So second condition is simple. We just want to check if the element that we get from the input, the first element, actually we're doing the structure here, like right. So it's the sequence, and then we do it as input, like it's access to the entire thing that we got. And then we do B, which is our bracket potentially, and the rest of the sequence. So this condition, just to skip everything that's not bracket. So if it's not open or closed bracket, we just recur with the rest of the input sequence and same stack as we had here. Now is getting a bit more interesting. Uh, if we uh, 
encountered uh, uh, open bracket, we want to add it to the stack and we want to pass the rest of the input next to the next iteration. Again, when you see recur, it means that we end existing uh, iteration and we move next. So first element that we pass into recur will be mapped to this uh, kind of let, let like statement here. Uh, second element will be mapped to this stack uh, let. Cool, so that's, that's it. And the final one, the most tricky one, is if we got a closing bracket and if that matches to first element from the stack, so the B is the potentially like is the closing bracket. First element in the stack in the stack is our pending open bracket that we seen before. If that this is true, we want to pass rest of the elements uh, and the rest of the stack because this pair of brackets uh, we know they are properly matched, so we can remove them from the stack. And again, this will continue the loop. If none of this is true, is matching in the cond, we always return false, because we know that the only thing that can return false here is this one. And um, if this is not true, that means that we uh, already have unbalanced uh, sequence. So we can terminate our loop uh, early and we don't even have to go through the rest of our input sequence. We can just say this is unbalanced. Okay, so regarding our um, test cases, I just wanted to implement uh, same idea as we had for the iterations. So now I just want to pass here our iterations iterations and here I want to calculate um, like next iterations and it will be uh, conj iterations and we want to add like b as B, and let's say we just want our stack there. Stack. Right, so what we got here, we'll save it and add it to iterations. And this is because I now I don't want to return that as well, so we can uh, look into our uh, tests and see what was the iterations in the loop. So we want to want this, and then we also want now to pass it as an extra argument into our loop recur because we added this con this let statement here. Okay, so I probably I don't want to nest it. I just want to say like empty here and remove the nesting. Right, that's good, and I want to pass it here and inside our closing brackets and again All right so now let's move into our notebook uh, let's see something smaller so here we have our iterations so first one we got open square bracket stack is empty next one we're getting um, uh, round one and the stack already uh, contains uh, our previous bracket and you can track that and so on uh, stack is growing until we uh, until we're getting first closing brackets and here it's reverse order as you can see uh, e the head of the stack is opening open uh, round bracket and this is matching so next time um, the stack has less elements right okay cool and yeah moving next we getting empty stack at the end and nil here empty seek 
empty stack means that it was properly balanced. So we return true as the result. Uh, here we have false, and here's our stack um, iteration uh, iterations. So as you can see, sometimes we get uh, chars that are not open or closing bracket, and we don't do we don't uh, modify stack at all. But yeah, um, here we go, and at the end we got this closing bracket. But this is what we got in the stack. So it failed to match and we have false. Cool. So as you can see, um, every unbalanced input is resulting into false. So it's here, false here. Um, yeah, I need to fix this three. I just want to return result. Like this. And as you can see now we have all falls here. And again, this is still working. We have true, true, true and true here for all our valid inputs. All right, so that was loop record demo. I hope it was a bit useful. Um, I also highly recommend looking into foreclosure uh, to boost your closure skills. And thanks for watching. Thanks for your subscriptions, likes and comments. Um, I also have a buy me a coffee page where you can support my work if you want. Um, thanks a lot. See you next video um, and bye-bye.